So you've got a Sony ZV-E10 and you have Sony Imaging Edge desktop and you're using these cables to connect this camera to that software so you can control your camera remotely, right? But guess what? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take these cables, throw them away, and you'll be able to connect this camera to that software, Wi-Fi, wirelessly, without any cables, and you're gonna get all of that information right here, baby. Let's go. Okay, so before you can even think about trying to connect wirelessly, well, you gotta have two things. You gotta have the software that you can download, right? Click the link in my description to go get that. And then you've gotta have a compatible camera, right? Well, I'm gonna show you all the cameras that are compatible with this wireless connection. <laughs> and I bet you thought that this was just gonna be another boring how-to video, right? <laughs> no. And there's so many other interesting things about this Imaging Edge desktop, but let me get into showing you what it is that you need to know right now. So check this out. I've got my Sony ZV-E10, right? small little camera you might not think there's much power behind this thing right but let me tell you something when i open up these doors baby i can connect the cables to it if i want to but i'm not going to you know why because i've got internally built into this system wi-fi that will allow me to wirelessly connect to the sony imaging edge desktop that's running on my laptop right now and since you already know that this camera can do what i needed to do i'm going to show you a few more cameras in the sony line that'll be able to do the same thing now let's go to the sony imaging edge support website and this is where you'd be able to get all the details and information on your particular camera you got me and in regard to remote shooting well most of the newer sony cameras will be able to connect via usb cable but only seven will be able to connect wirelessly and as you already know the sony zv e10 is no exception so let's go down the list and check out what the other ones can do too now what i want you to remember is that the instructions in this video are only for the zv e10 but they will be similar in all of the other cameras also and you can see at the very top my remote shooting options, USB connection, Wi-Fi connection, and wired LAN. So your focus is going to be on Wi-Fi connection because that's what we're doing in this video, right? And I want you to know exactly where you can go check out your camera for your wireless connection and understand that the speed of that connection wirelessly is going to be affected by many other components. And here we go. Let me show you how to get in there. Go to your ZV-E10 and at the very top, you'll see where your menu button is, right? Go ahead and push it. And what you'll need to do is to get into your network settings. You see that little green globe at the very top, right? And what I'm going to do is kill this music so that way you can pay attention to what it is that I got to show you right now. Now you notice that I'm in smartphone connection. You see that? Once you go into smartphone connection, you will see that it's either on or off. Now mine is on, whereas usually you'll have to turn this function off, right? But go to the connections just below and press the center button on your scroll dial and you will see that your SSID will appear. Now this is what you're going to have to remember because you're going to have to select this when you go to your laptop computer and you're going to have to select your network settings that will match the settings that you have on your camera that you're looking at right now. You got that? But wait a minute, you might have a problem here because when you select this Wi-Fi name on your computer, well, you're going to need a password, right? So the problem is, where's the password? So that's easy. All you have to do is go to the little trash can there at the bottom. You see that? And this is now our little secret because when you press it, the password for your SSID on your camera will be revealed and you're going to have to remember that because you won't be able to gain access on your computer and establish a connection unless you know that password. So I'm going to go ahead and take a picture with it so that way I don't forget it. You know what I'm talking about? Because you know how my memory is, right? I don't forget anything. Thing. So now you should be going to your computer to select the Wi-Fi SSID name that you just saw on your camera, right? What was it again? Well, anyway, I know you'll remember because I had ZVE10 at the very end. And guess what? It's asking me for my password. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in, right? Because I remember that. And once you've established a connection with your camera, all you have to do is open your Imaging Edge desktop. Now, what I like to do is to go ahead and double check to make sure that I am connected to my camera. And if you guys want to make sure that you have a proper connection, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, okay? And don't forget to ring that notification bell to get the updates on my videos too okay and now that we've got that taken care of let's go ahead and take care of our sony imaging edge desktop to see if we can see what's going on with our camera wirelessly now you see that little start button on the right right you notice how i'm hovering over it go ahead and push it and immediately after that you're going to see your sony camera appear on the list of compatible cameras that you'll be able to connect remotely now if you don't see your camera here on this list you're going to have to go ahead and reconnect to your wi-fi and also at the very bottom you'll see that there's another option to re fresh so that way you'll be able to rescan the system and once you see your camera go ahead and click on it one time it'll turn blue and then from there you just double click and it will initiate the process of connecting your camera to your sony imaging edge desktop wirelessly and look i've got a live feed from my camera to my computer with no strings attached <laughs> now how cool is that now basically looking at your desktop interface you'll be able to have some level of
of control over your camera and your camera will also have some level of control over your computer. You see how I'm just touching and focusing on my camera and then I can go to my interface and also make some setting changes to my remote camera. Now you see how I'm at four by three for my aspect ratio? Well, I can go ahead and select 16 by nine. If this change will take effect in camera and this is the aspect ratio for YouTube. You guys know that, right? 16 by nine. And also you can make changes to your focus mode and focus area. Do you see how I'm changing my wide focus area to zone? And these changes are being made remotely from my computer over to my camera. Now, just on a point of reference, I just want to let you guys know that I did find some latency when I was trying to access some of these features. And also there were some inconsistencies and lag in the video image as I was trying to use this setup under normal conditions. Now, you guys stay locked because I'm going to have some more videos for you on the Sony Imaging Edge desktop and how we can make some improvements here. And also, I'm going to give you some of the best settings on the Sony ZV-E10, which I'm very impressed with. Okay, so you guys listen, shoot me a comment if you guys got any questions on this video. Okay, I'm out. All right, you guys, thank you so much for allowing me to do this video for you. The Sony ZV-E10, pretty cool when you're connecting that thing wirelessly, right, via Wi-Fi to your Sony Imaging Edge desktop. And I got some more things coming for you for the Sony Imaging Edge desktop, so you guys stay tuned. And until then, what do we always say? Live, laugh, and learn, right, baby? Peace. I'll see you guys on the next one.